Okay, just a quick little recap on quadratic formula, because I'm sure you all have it memorised from last year still. So if we have a quadratic in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, then we can use the quadratic formula. Now, this actually comes directly from completing the square that we looked at on the last video. If you tried to do completing the square on that formula there, on that equation of ax squared plus bx plus c, you'll end up with it rearranged and looking like this. That's where the quadratic formula comes from. If you want to see that step by step, you can look it up. It's in your textbook. So let's apply this to this equation here. So a would be 3, b would be minus 2, and c would be minus 7. Pop it into the formula. And then solve it. And those solutions work out like this. Um, always put your solutions to three significant figures unless the question asks or states otherwise. Okay, now moving on to coded quadratics. These can be a little bit difficult to spot that they actually are a quadratic and that you can solve them. So it might look something like this. Now this is actually a quadratic because we can write it in a way that looks like our normal quadratics, even though our highest power there is 4. Now the easiest way I find to do this is to put in something else. So let this capital X be equal to X squared and rewrite each part of that equation in terms of that capital X. It doesn't actually matter what you use. Um, I'm using a capital X here so we can see it more easily as a quadratic. So X to the 4 would become capital X squared because that would be X squared squared. And then x squared is simply capital X. And then we've got the minus 72 equals 0. Now that is much easier to spot as an ordinary quadratic that we can factorise. So plus 9 and minus 8, that multiplies to give negative 72 and adds to make a 1x. And solving that, we then substitute back in that capital X is x squared. So x squared equals minus 9. That's an invalid solution because we can't square root negative numbers, at least not yet in this course. You will do next year, but you don't need it this year. And then we follow on with the other solution. So x squared equals 8. So x is plus or minus the square root of 8. And that is our solution. Let's have another go. This one's a little harder to spot. But we can see that our powers there are related to each other. x to the 4 is the square of x squared. But we've also got it as a fraction too. It makes it a little more tricky. So let's rewrite that. And again, I can use any letter here. I'm going to use an A this time to show you that it can work anyway. And we're going to write that as a fraction, 1 over x squared. Now rewrite each part of that equation. And that's what we get. So the 2 over x squared becomes 2A, because that would be the same as 2 times 1 over x squared. And the 1 over x to the 4 is a squared because that would be 1 over x squared all squared. Now rearrange that into the form that we're used to so we have the a squared coming first and then everything follows after that and we can factorize that one. Now not all of these will factorize sometimes you might need to use completing the square sometimes you use quadratic formula but the key here that we're looking at today is just coding them. So I've just picked ones that factorise for you so nicely. So carrying on from there, we've got a equals 3 or a equals minus 1. At that point, we need to substitute back in what a was. So that means 1 over x squared equals 3. And carrying on with that, x squared would be a third. So x would be plus or minus the square root of a third. Then with the other one, a equals minus 1 gives us 1 over x squared is minus 1. That gives us x squared equals minus 1, which we can't do. So that's an invalid solution. And our final solution is just those um, two that we had there of x equals positive square root of a third or negative square root of a third.